dreading making this video. Um, you shouldn't listen to me on anything. I have that introduction on the rest of my videos when I'm talking about Bible verses and discussing my thoughts on things. And that's what this channel is, just my thoughts. But I have that introduction. It is to always pray for guidance from the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of Truth will lead you into all truth, and I do believe that. So, pray to not be deceived, and pray to always find the truth. It's my motto. But, as this is probably going to be called, you have to be strong to actually wonder if you're wrong. To actually consider you could have been wrong on something. And that's what I've been doing the last few days, wondering if I'm wrong on something concerning the Bible. And it's difficult. I've made so many arguments um, based on my beliefs. And then it's really hard to actually, you know, say you're wrong. And I don't know if I'm wrong or not. Um, I posted this on Facebook, the quotation, you have to be strong to wonder if you're wrong. And, you know, so many people can hear that and think of so many different things. I'm sure I have flat earthers who are thinking, well, yeah, they had to be really strong to wonder if they were wrong about be the earth being a globe. And then I have the people who follow me who don't believe in the Trinity. And they're probably thinking, yeah, you have to be really strong to wonder if Jesus isn't God as you were told. And actually go into the Bible and see if that's true, search out the truth. And then I have people that are probably just thinking, well, you know, they were probably wrong in a conversation with somebody. Maybe they treated somebody poorly. And they're wondering, you know, maybe they were wrong about that. And they have to let go of the fact that they thought they were right, their pride. You pretty much have to let go of your pride when you realize that you're wrong and you become very humble. You either have to be very strong to be very humble or you're humble and it gives you strength. I'm not sure. It's like the chicken with the egg. But you do have to be strong to really wonder if you were wrong on something, to be able to admit that you were wrong or to look at the other side and question your beliefs I've always been for questioning my beliefs. I used to debate people online, um, atheists, about the Bible. And you have to listen to their arguments to prove that their arguments are wrong, that they might be seeing it in a bad light, that they're just not seeing the truth. And so I've done that. You know, I've questioned whether something that an atheist would say is right or wrong before. And that's the best way to prove that you're right. It's also the best way to prove that you're wrong. And that's how I found out the Trinity wasn't true. It's questioning it, actually. Looking at every proof text, quote unquote proof text, that Jesus is God and realizing that there's another way to read those verses. It doesn't prove Jesus is God prove he's the creator. That I have proven. Um, whether or not anybody else wants to believe what I've seen, that's on them. This channel has never been about proving that I'm right and everybody else is wrong. It's not what it's about. Because I know I can't prove anything. I know nobody proved the flat earth to me. Nobody. I can't prove it to anybody else. We can't prove these things to each other. People have to let that go. You can't prove it. You can make your arguments, but if somebody doesn't want to believe that, they're not going to believe it. And it was God who led me to um, finding out the truth. He proved it to me. I wrote some notes. I'm trying to get this down without getting sidetracked. Um, 
in the beginning, May 2015, I was just a normal, lukewarm Christian. I didn't read the Bible much. I um, didn't pray much. I mean, I might say, hey, Father, help me on this or something. God, help me, you know, when I was struggling. But I didn't do that every day. I didn't ask him what he wanted me to do every day. Now I wake up and say the Lord's Prayer, Yahweh's Prayer. You know, our Father who art in heaven, that one. Ask him what he wants me to do each day. and That's what I do. And I'm still doing that. Um, still trying to be led by the Holy Spirit. There's only a couple people out there who probably know what I'm talking about, but you'll see. Um, so the beginning was May, and God woke me up with a dream. God woke me up with a dream in May. And it was about aliens. And um, I prayed for God to save me. But I knew when I got up from having that dream that I had to write it down, that I had to share it. I felt that, that it was from God, that I had to share it. There was a message there. So I wrote it down. When I wrote it down, it came out like a song, rhyming. When I said that quote, you have to be strong and wonder if you're wrong, it came out rhyming. It just feel like that's from God, you know, when it does that. I don't know if it's about singing or whatever. Things come out rhyming. Interesting to me. But regardless, um, I started doing God's will more instead of my own will. And then I was attacked by demons, and then I had my deliverance. And I've been through this before, you know, in my other videos. And uh, it's just I really had to remove people and just to sort of refresh your brains with how everything happened. Um, so then I was fasting, um, on a weekend and I saw a video on flat earth. It wasn't about flat earth. It was about something else or I wouldn't have clicked on it. And I was watching it and all of a sudden he said, and that's why I know the earth is flat, you know? And I was like, what? <laughs> and I stumbled upon a crazy person and then I clicked off the video, went on to something. Within 24 hours, I was still fasting, and I was led to watch a flat earth video, and I questioned it, and I thought they have really good arguments, and I asked myself, you know, can I believe this? Don't trust men. They lie. They twist things. That's proven. So, I prayed to God for the truth, and probably within five minutes, I had it. I mean, I got up and I went to the Bible to find out the truth. I started in Genesis to see how the earth was created. And in seven verses, I had the proof that the earth, you know, was not a globe, that God had created a firmament above us. Seventh verse, so perfect, number seven. Um, so... I found out that everybody was lying to us. Kind of puts me in a tailspin. Um, to understand that what you believe is just make believe. That they have programmed you to believe things. I guess I could have even started that out with saying that, you know, when I was a child, I was told um, that Santa Claus is real. And then I found out that he wasn't. It shakes your faith, you know? That one didn't. Santa Claus didn't. But I remember thinking that, you know, when I was that young, I thought, but what about God? You know, if you tell your child that Santa Claus is real and he knows when you're sleeping, he knows when you're awake, he knows everything, and then you say he's not real, and then, well, what about God? You know? Why weren't you lying about God, too? And I remember as a child thinking, wow, I'm glad I have such faith. I never questioned whether Jesus died for me or not. I never questioned that. I don't remember a time even being taught that. I've always felt that. I remember wondering what if, you know, what's 
what made God, you know, when I think everything had a creator, but the creator didn't have a creator, you know, how does that go? I couldn't imagine anything bigger than that. When did he become, you know, um, gave me a headache as a child. I had to stop being young. But, um, you know, I was told, I'm trying to see where I am on my notes because I've gone off track. Um, when I was told about Santa Claus, you know, we get told lies. And when you find out that they're lies, the first thing you're thinking is, was there something else that I was lied to? So I prayed to not be deceived. I read that verse where Jesus said, you know, take heed that no one deceive you by any means. I thought, wow, I should pray about that. So I prayed not to be deceived, and I prayed to be led to the truth. And that's what I tell everybody else to do. Because we shouldn't be deceived. We should want the truth. A lot of people don't want the truth. They just don't. They don't ever question themselves, because they think they have it. They don't want to actually wonder if they're wrong. Um, so I prayed not to be deceived, and then around this time last year, and I've mentioned to you all that I think time is cyclical, so I don't think this is, you know, any different. Around this time last year, I was led to question the Trinity. And it was a few days before Hanukkah, I actually looked that up. Because... I have noticed spiritual things have happened to me based on the feast days, the Jewish feast days. And it happened around Hanukkah last year that I started questioning the Trinity. And I was right. Isn't it interesting? It was around Hanukkah. And here I am again questioning something, feeling led by God to question something. So I have to go with that faith that for a purpose. Um, I didn't know what time, I mean, I didn't even know when Hanukkah was. I had to look it up for last year when I realized this. I was like, wow, it was around this time last year. Um, right, so I started looking into whether John, the book of John is legit. I don't think it is. I think it was very Gnostic. If you want to know why, you can ask me. I'll give you the links and stuff. But I'm studying it. I'm going to study it. I haven't done way too much yet, so I just kind of got overwhelmed because I was working on this website about proving the Trinity wrong because there's so many verses that do, there's so many explanations, and I think it keeps people from stopping sinning. And that's awful, because they're stock slaves to sin, and that's just awful. Um, I just don't know. John just seems like it's very against the rest of the gospel. Luke, Matthew, and Mark. They're called the Synoptic Gospels, Luke, Matthew, Mark, because they are similar. They tell similar stories. John doesn't. I was talking to somebody on Facebook, a group of, you know, Bible discussion, basically, and some, I was questioning why John had a different account of the arrest, you know, the Synoptic. Gospels have Judas kissing Jesus as proof that Jesus was the one that Judas was trying to find out. And in John, that's not written there. Instead, Jesus says, I am who you're looking for. Instead of letting Judas kiss him. And of course, people are trying to tell me that they're parallel. They work together. I understand the argument. I'm still researching. But somebody said, 
that wasn't the point of John. They said the point of John was to prove Jesus' deity. When you see John, that's usually where people go to prove that Jesus was God or that he pre-existed. It's been going on since before the Arian controversy because even the Arians thought he pre-existed. not what the rest of the Bible says. And I've been able to debate with people proving he doesn't pre-exist. Because the proof that he does is just not there. And, you know, not that I proved it. The arguments are there and the Holy Spirit leads people to the truth. They are led to follow the Holy Spirit so you may see it. Um, but anyway, John seems to be very Gnostic, way more than I thought it was. I need to study Gnosticism because its tentacles are in so much concerning this. The people who believe Jesus is God and actually left Jesus' body because God can't die, that's the Gnostic idea. The belief that the body is sinful and the spirit can be clean inside, that's the Gnostic idea. We need to study Gnosticism to see if these ideas are from the Gnostics or if they're from the Jewish Bible, the Torah. I don't even know how much to trust of the New Testament if I throw off John at all. The scriptures we're supposed to study that are for reproof and rebuke and all that, the scriptures, it's the Torah, the Old Testament, it's not the New Testament, the New Testament. And I'm reminded of how many people went about praising God without, you know, living holy lives without having a Bible. There were so many people who couldn't read or write. The New Testament wasn't written for a long period of time. Okay? Abraham didn't have that to go by. He pleased God without a Bible, you know. There's people who didn't have a Bible that pleased God. Even um, Abel had uh, given a good sacrifice to God. Oh, that I remember. It has me doubting some of the stuff in the Old Testament, too, which is awful, I know. But we're also told in the Bible to prove all things. If you can't prove it, then how can you believe in it? Hold fast to the that which is true. You have to prove that it's true to hold fast to it that it's true. You know. So what do I believe? Um, I believe we can stop sinning. I believe that there is definitely the Holy Spirit inside that's leading us to stop sinning. We can follow the Holy Spirit to get holy. Is set apart. I feel like I'm being led by the spirit of truth because I'm searching for the truth. Searching for the truth, but I'm still praying to not be deceived. I cast out demons. I know they exist. I don't need proof. Um, I, you know, there's so many things, knowledge that has come to me that I've been able to discuss and share with people on this channel. That isn't from me. The strength that I have for doing this channel, that isn't from me. I know God is strengthening me. I know that he's working in my life. I also know that I woke up this morning and saw 9-11 and 9-23 on the clock. I don't know how to see those times. But he's still showing me messages. I know he's real. I'm not questioning it. I just question, you know, like I said about Santa Claus, um, you teach your kids that Santa Claus is real and you tell them that he's not, then they start questioning if God is real and you tell them he is. And they're like, well, why should I believe a liar? Okay. Well, I know that there's verses in the Bible that were put there. We know that there's forgeries in the Bible. So if somebody added text to the Bible, forgeries, Who's to say they didn't add a whole chapter and a whole book? So 
So left with trying to find the truth, and all I know is how can I trust the lying scribe that Jesus tells us to be? And I don't know how I can continue to tell people to study John if I think John is a liar. So I'm kind of stuck in this position where I have to study it at this point to see if it's real. Um, what else I believe? Let's see. I believe Jesus existed, but they went through a lot of trouble to make him into something he wasn't. They made Jesus into God so that people could stay sinning. You know, they they come up with so many different explanations of what Jesus is and how many blasphemies. I mean, nobody has chosen to use the word Buddha as a swear or, you know, Kali. Well, Kali is a swear. No. They use Jesus' name. And yeah, I know he's not named Jesus like Yahshua or Haushua or something like that. I mean, Joshua is really how it got translated here because they have the same name. But um, they know what his name was. They know what they turned it into. They use his name as a swear. Why? Blasphemy. If it's blasphemous, then that means there's something special about it, you know? Um, so they made him into something that he wasn't. Which means I want to find out who he was. What I want to study is who was he? What's real? What isn't? Are the synoptics good? I mean, they agree with each other. We have multiple witnesses. Saying Judas betrayed him with a kiss. But John doesn't have a second witness for his version of what happened in the garden. Nobody else says that they all fell down and Jesus said, I am he. I'm not here to prove that he's wrong. I'm not trying to do that. I'm just saying, what if he is wrong? Shouldn't we be looking for the truth? And that's Spirit of truth leads you into all truth. And if you're bucking it, like, I don't want to look at that. Well, yeah, there's a great delusion coming for those who don't love the truth. So my motto has always been try to find the truth. So you have to study to, to prove. Hold fast to these things that are proven and true. God's proven himself to me. I know that. Um, and I commanded demons out in Jesus' name. But just looking at the last few things that I was going to say, um, things I believe are true. I believe in what I've been led to be speaking on, the third temple and stuff. I know that they're planning on building a third temple. I know that they're planning on trying to fulfill the Old Testament promises so that they can bring in the Messiah with their wicked. And I believe that the Pope is still for Babylon. The beast, the Antichrist beast, certainly keeps people from finding the truth that they can stop sinning. And when you're still sinning, you're a slave to sin. And I wholly believe you can stop sinning by having the Holy Spirit. The power is amazing. Um, and God's still showing himself. So I'm uh, leaning on that. It's a little rocky for a couple of days, but um, definitely leaning on that. And I was talking to this guy who had a bunch of videos on how the Trinity was false. And we had a lot of great arguments. So I thought that was interesting. And then he had some arguments against John, which I was very curious. Um, but I talked to him on the phone for a couple of hours. And he turned agnostic because he was digging into this stuff. And he's like, you'll be, you'll be agnostic too. God's proven himself to me, and he cleared up my life. I've done a 180. I have the power I have to be on YouTube to deal with the criticisms. I had thin skin a year and a half ago. I have thick skin this year. That's God. That's not None of the stuff that I do is of my own power. You know, 
I wouldn't even have a YouTube channel if it wasn't for God. Um, and of course, this stuff happened on Hanukkah. Today is the last day of Hanukkah. And I told you guys that every single holiday season of Yahweh's has led to something changing in my life. And the trend continues. So if his feasts lead to that, obviously he exists. Obviously he's real and amazing. And, um, but anyway, I was on the phone with the guy and he brought up this example. I mean, he was giving me lots of contradictions in the Bible. I mean, that's what atheists do. He was agnostic. I know the difference from that. Not like I haven't argued with atheists before. Contradictions in the Bible. But there's things, a lot of things that I have to wonder about. You know? We're supposed to search out the truth. It's the, the glory of God to conceal a matter and the honor of kings to search it out. He wants us searching to find him. He wants us searching for the truth. And we've buried it all. So we have to go searching. But anyway, he brought up one thing, the guy on the phone. I ran out of space on my tablet, so it just shut off. <laughs> so I'm going to have to do this in parts. Um, but what he was saying is he came up with this scenario trying to prove a point. And he said, you know, imagine that You've got somebody with a gun to your head, and you're um, connected to a lie detector. And you they're saying that you have to change your beliefs um, and say that you don't believe in gravity and have it come out as true. I found this to be a sign from God, and he made me laugh. I don't believe in gravity because I believe the earth is flat. <laughs> Out of any, I mean, who thinks of that? Out of any kind of scenario he could come up in his mind to try to prove a point, he has me trying to say that there is no such thing as gravity as truth when he thinks that I believe that that's, you know, that of course there's gravity. You understand, hopefully I'm not messing that up. But it's ridiculous. Out of, what are the chances that he would come up with that, that as an example? When I don't believe in gravity. And I could wholeheartedly get it to say positive that I don't believe in gravity. Um, I just found that like a sign from God. that Yeah, he's still with me. Even as I go on this journey of questioning things, he's still there. You know? Another thing I've talked about before with people is the meaning of the word Israel. Jacob, I've connected this to Jacob's trouble in the past, and I find it interesting. Um, Jacob wrestled with God, and then he got the name Israel, which means wrestles with God. Um, we can ask questions. We can figuratively wrestle with God. He wants us to search out answers. He wants us to search him out. He loves it. So, you know, that's what I'm going to do. Continue to search things out, ask questions to hold fast to what is true. And I might be completely off base. Maybe Paul isn't false. I haven't looked into that too much. Maybe. Um, the book of John is absolutely true, and he's just really, really misunderstood. I'm going to be looking, though. I'm going to be questioning, because that's what I had to do with the Trinity. And once again, this Hanukkah, I have another project I have to question. I found out the Trinity was false. And then it keeps people from seeing the truth. If John is false, is it keeping people from seeing the truth of something else? I know people use it to prove that Jesus pre-existed. Is that a problem? There are still non-Trinitarians who think Jesus existed, you know, before 
the world was. I believe the Seventh-day Adventists do. So I don't know if I'll do videos on it or just really, really study before I start. But all I say here on this channel is my opinion and my thoughts, and they can change. As I may have been completely wrong to be quoting John, for all I know. Maybe I was right. Maybe I'm going to find out and just be more understanding. Sometimes God has us question something to go out and study because there's something else that you need to study and see. And that's the way that he wants you to study it. What I do know is God does not want you to accept doctrines of men. And who put the Bible together? The same people who were idolaters. They believed Jesus to be God. And they put the Bible together. So how can I trust them? The translators thought Jesus was God and they translated these words in a way that it would make it sound like he was God. So how can I trust them? And keep thinking about the Santa Claus thing. People, Christians are still going to go out there and lie to their kids. But how can you believe how can you believe your parents on anything if they lie to you? So how can you believe the Bible on anything if it's lied to you? And by the very word choices that translators have used and the fact that they put in 1 John 5, 7, most people will admit it was forged, even Trinitarians, just the scholars, not the lay people. And apparently the scholars think that John isn't meant to be read literally. I have to study that. The scholars say that you should accept John, but they say that it wasn't literal. And as far as I know, there's supposed to be another verse that says, rewrite these things in John. Is John a we now? You know? I just have to study. Um, but just want you guys to pray for your own discernment. And I'm just pretty much trying to explain where I'm at. Um, I might hesitate to give a verse from John or something. You know, I might just react differently to um, hearing some verses from the New Testament now and wonder, you know, what if that wasn't fair or something. Um, I'm just more inquisitive rather than steadfast. Um, but I believe everything is for a purpose, and I've already seen some videos being uploaded that, you know, on YouTube, that it's like it goes along with this stuff that I should be studying. So I know that I'm going on the way that was paved before me. Whether or not you want to follow me and still listen to me, that's on you. All I have ever said this channel was for is for Yahweh. And, you know, explaining what I'm looking at, what I'm thinking, why I'm thinking it, why I don't think, like why I don't think the Trinity is real. If you accept it, you know, that's between you and God. If you don't accept something I say, that's between you and God. I'm not saying that I was right on everything, especially if I think that John is faulty. I certainly can't say I'm right on everything. So, um, always pray to not be deceived by anybody, and that includes myself. And I'm just gonna 
you know, explain what I'm doing and going through, I guess. And that's all this is. I just don't want you to be confused if somebody asks me a question on John, you know, what I think about it. I don't know how to respond right now. I just have to study more. You know? God wants us to spend our lives searching Him and looking for Him and pleasing Him. And it pleases Him that we want to know Him, I believe. So, you know, and He is the truth. In Him there are no lies. So, if you, if you are going to just, you know, not want to look into anything, if you never want to wonder if you're wrong on something, never look at it from another perspective and wonder if it could have been something else, if it maybe there was some other way to see that, you know. Those are the kind of people that love lies, that love not the truth, and that are given over to the grand illusion. We're supposed to always be looking for the truth, have a couple of witnesses, and stead, stand fast, steadfast on uh, the truth. And um, that's why I have to study this stuff. Um, Hopefully, I won't get called all kinds of names, <laughs> but I've been called just as bad anyway, probably. So, hopefully you understand. Um, we're supposed to question things. We're supposed to struggle with God. We're supposed to wrestle with God and become Israel. I believe that struggles with God and overcomes sort of, you know, moving into a new phase. And that's what I think that our life is really about is just the cyclical, it's just this cyclical year that keeps going round and we have to keep learning something new, shedding off the lies and falsehoods and getting closer to the truth. <laughs> All I can hope is that I I feel, you know, next year, let's say 11 months from now, just as strong in my faith that I felt one month ago, you know, because things had gotten so much clearer to me when I found out Jesus wasn't God. And I'm hoping that what I'm going to be researching and studying and everything will make things so much more clearer again. Because that's what getting rid of the lies does. You get down to the truth and you get steadfast in it. Yeah. And people can't sway you when you know what the truth is. Like, I know God. I know that it's His power that got rid of the demons in my life and I know that it's his power that I was able to um, do all the things I did this past year and a half. All the glory goes to him. All that power was his, not mine. The fact that I have over 5,000 viewers on my channel, I was like shocked when I had 200 viewers, subs, whatever. You know, um, it's not because I'm smart that people were even listening to me. Um, it's all because of God, you know. It, it's not me. And, um, so I know that that power is real. I know that He is real. And that is what I'm going to stay with is the Holy Spirit. I'm going to go where it leads me. Spirit supposedly moves like the wind, right? 
uh, where wherever it pleases to go, and then that's where I go. Um, and I still think the more we get rid of our sin, the more we are asking what His will is each day and doing His will, then we're going to be led on the right path. And that's what I'm going to continue to do. And that's what I continue to suggest other people do because it's always led me to stay safe and stay guided and stay in the truth and not be deceived, you know? Always leading me to more truth. And, you know, don't be angry. This whole Pizzagate thing, I hope people understand, you know? I know some people don't. Some people are really still stuck on um, anger. I got a few comments about people who want, you know, these people murdered and stuff, and they don't want to grant forgiveness. And if you don't want to grant forgiveness, then that means you don't want to be forgiven. You get what you give. If you give forgiveness, you will be forgiven. And you'll find peace. If you don't forgive people, then you're hanging on to a bunch of anger. And I know a call for the uprising, or an uprising, whatever, he got so angry. And he admitted it himself that he can't stop that anger, you know, and that affects you. It affects what you say and how other people hear you. I've never really been able to listen to a call for an uprising for, you know, too long. Um, and I'm talking about like minutes, like more than 10 minutes might be stretching it just because he's just so angry, you know, and I can't listen to all that anger. And he accepts that. So hopefully he'll get rid of his anger while he's gone from YouTube. But a lot of people just don't, they don't want to get rid of their anger. They don't even see it as a problem. They just want to stay unforgiving, which means they don't want forgiveness. That's the point. You get what you give. That's what the Bible says. And I believe that because when I forgave, my life changed. So that's the major point of the deliverance videos that I have. You know, is you have to forgive people or else you can't be forgiven and you can't command the demons to leave. So really the basic, the first step is always forgiving people, even those who want to kill you. Um, I think these these things are very evident to me, at least. Anyway, um, thanks for listening. If you listen to this this long, um, if you want to pray for me, that's fine. But I would just suggest don't pray against God. Like I know some people would listen and they think, oh well, we've got to pray that I accept the Bible as the whole truth. Well, what we should do is pray God's will be done. Pray that, you know, people will come to the truth. You shouldn't assume you already know what the truth is before praying. But just, I guess, all I would ask is pray for uh, peace and understanding, wisdom, discernment, not to be deceived. Find the truth. So that's what I'm thinking, I guess. And um, it's why you might notice a change in me <laughs> and what I'm focused on. I'll still be focused on the news, I believe, because there's so many things prophecy-wise coming to pass. And there's a reason for that. Like I said, I mean, people are so against Jesus because 
he's real, you know. There's a soul against him, um, trying to change his words, the meanings, you know, because they don't like what he was originally saying, such as go and sin no more. They don't like that. So they turned him into a god, and uh, a god who supposedly died so that you would stay simple. You know what kind of god that would be? That would be like Satan being a god, you know, like Lucifer, whatever. That would want you to stay in your sin, stay a slave to sin. No god I want. There's freedom, getting rid of your sin and getting rid of the demons that harass you and keep you spiritually blinded. So, stop sinning. That's what I want people to do. Whether you agree with me or not, then if that is possible, ask yourself if that's what God wants. All things are possible with God, and God doesn't want you to sin. And God doesn't want you hurting. God doesn't want you to be a slave of sin. So, he gave us the power to stop that. So, stop sinning. Go and sin no more. Thanks for listening, and have a blessed day.